tests will help us understand if a child has special needs and, and or they're gifted. And there's some a misunderstanding out there about what, quote, let's talk about gifted first, is that if somebody is gifted, it doesn't mean they're gifted in all areas. So if we go back to the, my, the idea of that there are people have peaks and valleys, you can have a child who is gifted in maybe two major areas, they have two major mountains where they're really high like in, not, in reasoning and in maybe visual spatial ability. And kids like that can do extremely well in the sciences and in, in, in mathematics. You may have another child who is lower on those, but could be gifted in the area of auditory processing, how they learn information through their ears and with their language, and that person can be maybe be more gifted in the area of language arts and maybe be in, in, in music. So when we talk about gifted, it's not just one score, that there's one IQ, there's one, one ability. Uh, gifted children, just like everybody else, have their own patterns. They may have higher peaks, and some of their other abilities may be lower, but they'll still be maybe average and normal compared to everybody else. Uh, when we talk about kids with special needs, we, uh, we want to know both about their peaks and valleys, but especially their valleys where they're weak. Is there an area that is a core deficit in their learning process that makes it very hard for them to learn, despite having some strengths in some areas? For example, if they may have pretty good reasoning skills and visual spatial skills, but their working memory, how much information they can hold in their mind at one time when they're solving a problem. Maybe a problem, it doesn't allow them to really use their capabilities over here. So the AJT will help us identify the strengths and weaknesses of both gifted children and children with special needs to allow us to match instruction that helps overcome their weaknesses, especially for children with special needs, and to tap into their strengths. And for the gifted children to, to allow us to better understand where they are gifted and where they are talented, because it's more than just one ability. When I talk about the peaks and valleys of, of a person as measured by the AGT, it's important to understand that when we talk about maybe the valleys where a person is a bit lower, the goal is not to take that ability and to try to raise it high, because sometimes you can't. It's just kind of something that they have to work with. And so what we try to do is we work around that, that difficulty by taking their strengths to compensate for their weaknesses. So uh, different children and different people may have different weaknesses that um, are kind of like temporary roadblocks, but if we don't understand them, we don't know what to do. We can look at those weaknesses and, and figure ways to work around them by modifying the, the teaching, by accommodating for their uh, difficulties, by maybe doing some remediation of some little parts of that, but not to raise it high, and maybe to teach how to work around that by co compensating with other strengths they have. Because there are many successful people and children who a lot of times figure out how to do this themselves. They struggle with something in, in learning and they just intuitively figure out how to work around it kind of like going around a traffic jam or around some construction. They figure it out based on their other strengths, their other uh, uh, peaks, if you want to call it, that allow them to compensate. Uh, when we use the AGT, we will have more direct, objective information what those strengths and weaknesses are to help a child figure out, and the teachers and the parents 